The dread I've been feeling, it's gone. I don't know. Something's still missing. But Dicey, I know we're moving in the right direction. Whoa. It's not like anything I've seen before. Okay, I don't think they spotted us. This doesn't look right. But it's got to be the place. The Grand Gate to Sixtopia. Huh? What? What happened here? I don't understand. Is this really it? Maybe this is like a fake Sixtopia. Meant to confuse invaders or something? our polite words around others, remember? Good morning, lovelies! Good morning, Charles! Why don't you look handsome today? <laughs> oh, heck, I'm just the same old man I always was, but bless your heart for lying, lovelies! <laughs> oh, you're here too, Albert. Hey, ugly. I'm a big, stupid cardboard person, and I'm Charles' least favorite because I'm a mean, stupid idiot who falls apart all the time. Yes, yes, Albert. We're all familiar with your whole deal. Excuse me, uh, Charles? Ha ha ha! We've been here for 60 years. You ought to know what's going on by now. Yeah, what gives? <laughs> Though, of course, not much actually does go on here. <laughs> you stand around and I fix you when you fall apart. Easy. Easy peasy. Oh! 
Of course you are, obviously. You're all real here. Oh, what do you mean I'm not real? Oh, now look what you've done. You've hurt Bedelia's feelings. There, there, Bedelia. Oh, she says mean things. I know, I know. I'm going to talk to her about it, okay? But you're real. We're all real here. No, we're real. If we were fake, could my head fall off all the time? Oh, no, no, no. Don't you dare, Albert. I've had enough of that for today by far. Alone? Ha! <laughs> I'm surrounded by friends here. <laughs> There's Bedelia, Claude, Claude too, Snuggle Buns, Eight Ball, Big Tony, Little Tony, Average Tony, the hated Albert. <laughs> Boingy Woingy, Peanut Butter and Jam, they're twins. <laughs> Don, Donner, Donist, Don Ultimate, Don Penultimate, Don Ultra Penult, Da. Well, I don't need to tell you their names. We've all been here forever. <laughs> you, you, you don't talk like the others, do you? She sure doesn't. Should we be suspicious, Charles? I'm very suspicious. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine to be curious, lovelies. Eh? Yeah, my earliest memory. Hmm. It's when my head first fell off, 40 years ago. <sighs> no, it's when me and Patty Cakes got married. Fifty years ago. <laughs> no. No. It was when I was young. Just... Just a child, really. The nanny came for me in that... That... That chariot that walked like a spider. She dropped me here. Told me my only task in life was to take care of these props. She said my fate was never... To be anything more than a forgotten janitor. And then she disappeared, and she never came back. But all I've done for every day of my life since then was live here alone, so profoundly alone, surrounded only by these... these parodies of life, mocking me every hour of every day with their ageless faces and painted on smiles, and I... <laughs> oh, so I thought. But then five years into it, y'all started talking to me and you've never stopped since. <laughs> and now you're an old man surrounded by friends who'll never die. Ha <laughs> ha, sure am, lovelies. <laughs> Ain't that a blessing? <laughs> Why, I must be the luckiest guy in the whole world. Woohoo! Not ever. They pass through sometimes. That hardly counts. They go to the tower. Look, I don't want to talk about it. Nanny's chariot passes through on its way to the tower. The children get quieter and quieter as the chariot moves away. Then we never hear them again. Oh, how I could visit them in the tower. What quiet fun they must be having! Then she's playing up in the tower all day long. How lucky! <laughs> uh, wait. Why would the Queen want the nanny to take one of us cardboard cutouts? It's never happened before! Maybe she isn't really a cardboard cutout like us? <laughs> no, she is. She's just lost her mind, that's all. I'm humoring her, see? <laughs> Tell me about your sister, lovely. <laughs> now, lovely. I learned long ago it's best not to make promises to yourself you can't keep. 
Yeah, where have I heard that name before? Oh, yes! Odd! The Queen graced us with her presence not too long past, and she had a girl with her. Odd, she called her. She wore a white mask, I remember. She looked strange. Strangely happy, yes, as are we all. <laughs> They didn't have time to acknowledge any of us, of course. She's very busy. But they went out that way, right through there. Well, I won't stop you, cardboard lady. <laughs> but hey, say hi to the queen for me. <laughs> Remind her I'm here. I'm still here. This must be it. A tower. What's inside there, Dicey? I can just feel it. She has to be. We've come so far, haven't we? But I still don't know for sure what you want me to do. Cards, cards here. I literally cannot have a card. Oh, hey! Oh, I've got cards to trade. Many decks here, card enthusiast at living store at your service.
<laughs> you want to trade your cards? I know you do. Been dealt a bad hand, have you? Ah, oh, never mind. Trade it here for a new one with me. Oh, many dicks. Card up my sleeve, in my chest, up my nose, up me, well, everywhere. Let's trade.
fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. <laughs> it's the sudden stop at the end that I'm worried about. Dicey? I feel it too, Dicey. You get close to it, and it's like every bone in your body is warning you to keep away. The goo! Almost as like it's living, or used to be alive. <laughs> Razor stakes with a new card! Man, he's got what you need. <laughs> Cards on the table. This is a bit outside my normal rounds, and not at all what I was expecting. But now you're here, and Maddie Dex is playing a sympathy card. You've got to buy something, mate. Please! Oh, Maddie doesn't try to understand the world. All I understand is cards. And I understand now that perhaps you're looking to trade. You never know who's listening, mate. Now, let's trade and forget all about any-
Seymour! Is that you? Seymour? <gasps> Seymour! <laughs> Is he... <laughs> You're alive! <laughs> oh... Is that you even? I was just resting my eyes. <laughs> Seymour, your eyes. They didn't even make it about a number. They just took all three. <laughs> I'm gonna get you out of here. <coughs> no, even you can't. There's too many. You'll never be able to. <laughs> what are you doing? Careful, even! <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can... <sighs> Even tougher than I knew, even. Uh, Nanny Fortuna happened to me, I'm afraid. She caught me in Forberg, captured me, tried to get me to talk about you, but I didn't tell them anything, even. Told them my name was Seymour. 
not talk more. <laughs> that's when... That's when she started taking my eyes. But what about you, Even? I, I thought you were going home. W what made you change your mind? Realized what? You've got a good heart, Even. The Queen... She's more powerful than you think. And from what I've overheard, your sister has changed. She won't be what you expect. Oh, I'm sorry, even about all of this. We adults messed up the world, and somehow it's been left to you to fix. A child sent to face off against the most twisted and dangerous being and random, and it's, it's not right. I'm sorry I can't stop you, even. And I'm sorry I can't help. There is. Whatever's happened to your sister, I, I don't think it's gone all the way yet. <laughs> Just be careful. There's nothing I can do to help you now. Especially given my uh, current condition. Oh, oh, thank you. Now, all we have to do is survive Nanny and the Queen and her minions, and we'll fix everything. Let's go. Hey, whoa. Seymour, you're, you're in no condition to fight. You need to rest. I can't let you do it alone. I'm not alone. Seymour, when this is all over, there will always be a place for you in one town. I'd, uh, I'd like that, even. I'm... I'm supposed to find someone here. No dicey. But I know they're here somewhere. You can imprison my body, but not my spirit. I did what I did for the rebellion. I regret none of it. The glorious rebellion of Four Town against the Queen in the No Dice War, of course. True, I was captured, but you cannot kill an idea. Vorberg will be victorious. Villainy can never triumph. My beloved motherland, tell me, how fares Fortown? Do the valiant and true still call it home? Do the birds sing songs of its glory? What news have you? Tell me, what became of Fortown? No, it's not possible. I... I don't... I can't... Vorberg? And what of her people? Ah, you see, the city may be gone, but the spirit is thriving, just as I may be rotting here in jail, but the rebellion lives on. Even though my city may no longer stand, its ideals always will. Huzzah! Huzzah, I say! You can imprison my body, but not my spirit. Oh, she was almost there. Almost there. One thing was certain. Her story had taken a very dark turn. This isn't what happens next, you know. You are in the presence of the narrator of the Queen herself. Show some respect, child. The Queen desires control. More than that, she desires not to be controlled. She reached a point where she thought I was controlling her. It would seem you're even more foolish than you look. 
We're narrators, child, not dictators. Ours is only to describe what happens. Stories take us places, all of us, even narrators. And my place, it would seem, is in prison, where I can narrate only myself. I could narrate volumes to you, child. But, like I said, that is not what happens next. Suffice it to say that when she was younger, the queen, then just a princess, she was happy. We were happy. There was such promise in her, a spark ineffable. Tragedy, something unexpected. She tried to stop it, but it is a tale long forgotten and best left that way. A narrator, we grow to reflect our subjects. I presume I was a nice narrator once, and she was a beautiful princess, inside and out. And then, well, you can narrate the rest of it yourself. One thing was certain. The story had taken a very dark turn. As days bled into Hail months, Kaiso, the and then into meant. years, no one could say what would happen now, least of all me. This was not what was supposed to happen. Even's narrator was so close, she just had to keep looking. Some part of Even knew her narrator was close. It was a feeling that went beyond words. I can forget that. Even and her narrator were almost reunited. She was so close. She was so dramatically close. My friend, thank you for the rescue. Now, I can get back to my job of narrating. <clears throat> the narrator said, narratively. Who are you? I mean, weird. Yeah, it's uh, you. There you are. Whoa, 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 wait. You can hear me? This is unprecedented. Ooh, but that doesn't mean it's bad. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, little one. It was hard being alone. I felt like half a person, if that makes sense. <laughs> it would be strange if you didn't. I am your narrator, after all. Oh, but it is nice to know when one's work is appreciated. But you can hear me now, and we should make the most of that while we can. One never knows how long it will be until the old authorities reassert themselves. We've got a quest to finish, my friend, and I stand ready to describe it if you stand ready to live it. Well, I'm afraid I can't even. I'm a storyteller, not an oracle. You and Icy live your life. I describe it during moments chosen for dramatic effect. And together, we'll make the best story we can, yeah? Wonderful. Then onward, even. Onward, Dicey. Now then, where were we? <clears throat> ah, yes. A girl, her dice, and her narrator were reunited at last. 
Behind them, the wreckage of all that had stood in their way. Ahead of them, the queen and her minions. Even squared her shoulders and strode forward toward her destiny. No, oh, I thank you. You have to get me out of here. I'm a unicorn, a real life unicorn. This used to be a beautiful palace, a place of learning, of magic, of... Oh, yes, Dicey. It was also a place of dice. Halls that once echoed with the laughter of children were now still empty and desolate. Oh, right. Except for even your amazing friend Diet. See who was great, did you say? Who was? And I quote, great and awesome to the max.